In this video, we'll be doing a basic rules derivation in single-place predicate logic. This is a bit of a trickier question, uh, but what makes it tricky isn't actually the new predicate stuff. What makes it tricky is that I have to use some tricks and techniques we learned in uh, sentential logic derivations to actually get through the question. Fundamentally, though, what's going to help us through this is the golden rule of derivations, which is EI first, UI to match. And other than that, we'll just use our skills of proof structure and show line breakdown, contradiction generators, and stuff like that to get through. This is a bit longer derivation, but it's actually not so bad. So, line one, show. So here, when I write my show line, I notice immediately that the main uh, connective, actually the main operator, is a universal. So the first thing I need to do is show line breakdown and make sure I do it correctly. So to show this, what I really need to do is show an instantiation of it, and we always instantiate it to the exact same variable letter, and that's that. Now that I have a new show line, I continue my show line breakdown, and this is a negation. It's neither a universal nor a conditional, so I just do an assume ID, and I'm left with a nice universal statement. No problem. Assume ID. So line three, which is my assume ID, is a universal. Uh, premise one is an existential. Premise two is a conditional. So I'll highlight that. Uh, premise three is a universal. And that's it. So of course, the golden rule says EI first, UI to match. So the very first thing I'm going to do without thinking is existentially instantiate this. And EI says you can drop the quantifier, all the instantiation rules say you drop the quantifier, and you replace it with a brand new variable letter that does not appear anywhere in your proof. So I'll choose I. F I or H I. And that's premise one existentially instantiation. Now this is nice because it actually pins something down for me. It tells me that I have a negation fi here, and I also have this uh, hi. And so what I should be looking for elsewhere in my derivation are places where I have f's and h. So hopefully I can use my f's and h's to uh, generate sort of moves that I can use in my sort of standard elimination rules. So of course I notice immediately on line 3 I have an f, and it's tied to a universal, which means it can change to anything it wants. So of course I'm immediately going to change it to fi and gi. And that is line 3 universal instantiation. Now I can simplify these, so I'll do so. Obviously you don't have to do these in separate lines, you can do them as part of your derivation shortcuts, but it doesn't matter. And so now I see that this fi will combine with my line 4 in a nice modus to lend opponens, and that is line 6, double negate, line 4, mtp, and I've generated hi. So this is a nice string of atomics here that I'm going to look to use. Okay, so that took care of this first premise, and now I have an hi. So I look around, and I notice that I do have an h here, and I also have a g here, so I can actually go on either direction. So it doesn't really matter which one I choose, I'm going to focus on premise 2 next. So premise 2, I have a g, uh, there exists an x, gx, and I have a gi here. So does gi generate this? Of course it does. If I want to generate an existential x, gx, that just means I need a singular instantiation of g. So g alpha, as I've been coding it elsewhere. But in this case, alpha is clearly already i, it doesn't matter. I have something that's a g, so of course something is a g immediately follows. So I can say there exists an x, gx. And that's 7 existentially generalize. So from here, the modus ponens is immediate, and I get for all y negation dy. Okay, so that is 9 premise 2 modus ponens, and I've taken care of that. Now I look over here, and I realize this is a universal. So I always ask, well, what is it that I'm going to instantiate to? The trick here is I already flagged it to myself. I don't have any information for D or for A, but I do have something for H because I already have HI down here. So the likely instantiation that will work here is to I. So I'll just write this as AI arrow HI arrow, there is a Y, D, Y. And that's premise 3 UI. Okay, so now I have to decide what to do. 
One thing I could do is I could try and, sorry, one thing is I can modus ponens, the other is I can modus tollens. And those are my only two options when I have a conditional. So I either want to show the antecedent or show the negation of the consequent. Well, it turns out both are equally easy, uh, so I'm just going to do one direction and you can try the other as practice. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to show the antecedent uh, because it's, well, they're both easy, so it doesn't really matter. So I'll just write show ai arrow hi. So I'll do this the slightly long way. So I'll write ai, which is acd, and then on line 14, I will show hi. Now, I'm not going to bother doing the assume ID because I notice already that I have the HI here. So I can actually just take HI and I'll say 8 repeat direct derivation. And that's that. And now this HI was shown under the assumption of AI, which means that I have shown that the actual full conditional results. So that means on line 14, I did a conditional derivation. And I did all this to get the antecedent of line 11. So now on line 11 and 12, I get a modus ponens, and that is a nice existential y dy. At this point, I don't even think. The second I get an existential, I existentially instantiate it. That's the golden rule, ei first, ui to match. And now I get d of j. Why j? It's got to be a brand new variable letter that doesn't appear anywhere in my derivation, and I already used i over here. So that's 17 EI. And finally, now I have good guidance here. This is DJ. And I remember that I have this D over here that is unused. And so I'm ready to universally instantiate line 10 to get uh, negation DJ. Because of course, UI says you match. You can UI to anything you want. So this is 10 UI. And of course, that is my indirect derivation. So I say 18, 19, ID, and that boxes this main show line. Now to finish the derivation, I just have to show that the universal follows. But of course, the universal follows because I showed that this property holds for an arbitrary member of my universe, Y. So if it holds for some arbitrary Y, it holds for everything. And so the short way to do that is just to say on line 2, I did a UD box and close. So you can see that I really just followed my EI first UI to match rule. And then I did some thinking about how I wanted to generate and attack each of uh, my show, uh, my premises here so that I get all the parts and then I just get a simple contradiction from some clean atomics.